Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art. I'm a full-time pet and wildlife portrait artist, mama, color fanatic, and to help me manage my stress this year, I've been creating art every single day. If you missed last week's tutorial, we're doing a Paint Your Dog Through the Storm series, and this is part two of Spot's tutorial. Part one is linked below. Now you can nominate your dog for a chance to become the next tutorial in this series. On any of these videos in this series, you can list your dog's name, breed, and something special about your dog. And make sure you list that in the description box below. All right guys, let's get painting. All right, so I have part one linked down below if you missed it, and I also have the traceable for this tutorial down there as well. So we left off in part one working on the collar, and the very last thing was the metal buckle part of the collar, which I created a gray. So I'm gonna work back into that gray, but for you if you're starting fresh, just add lots of white to a little bit of black to create a medium gray. So not a light gray, not a real dark gray, a medium gray, because we're gonna be applying our darkest values to the white fur on spot. And we're trying to make this look like white fur, which is why we don't wanna start with light gray and we don't wanna start with a dark gray. We wanna build up from dark to light, but starting with a medium value makes more sense. So like a medium blue or a medium gray or even a medium violet is our colors that we could use for white fur. I'm using a size one round brush from the Variety Pack by Arteza. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for any area where I see indents in the skin or just a shadow being created because there's a lack of light getting to it. So I see some gray right where it's connecting with the black on Spot's face. I see gray where there's an indent below the left eye. There's gonna be gray around any wrinkles or folds in the skin. We're not looking for the gray of the spots. That's something I like to add to the end. Okay, so you ready for some more corny dog jokes? Why are dog barks so loud? They have built-in subwoofers. When you cross a frog with a dog, what do you get? A croaker spaniel.
All right, so mix up more of this gray if you're running out or it's, if it's dry because we're going to use it to fill in the little bit of chin that we see around Spot's mouth. There's just a little outline there. That's why I'm going to move to a size zero rigger brush. So if you watch me, I'm going to very carefully outline around those black gums and then I'm going to bring it up so it's overlapping that collar just slightly and the little buckle metal part. I just want to note here though, we're mixing up the same gray as we were just using, but as I move more to the right side, I discover that I actually need to make it lighter. So then I move to the left side, I get that gray down, and as I work to the right, I start pulling in more white. Just watch me. All right, so here I go. I'm going to paint over the gray that we started with at the beginning around this area. And now I'm pulling in more white just because this side of the mouth is going to be getting more light. Now this part is really important. The gray that we have outlined around the side of his smile here, I'm not trying to blend this gray into that. It's actually a lighter gray we're using here. Remember I added more white? Well, we're just layering it next to it, not blending it into it. Now I'm switching brushes here, but it really doesn't matter which brush you're using because I'm just going to add a dab or two to the bridge of the nose. All right, so we have our dark values down for the face on the white fur. Now we're gonna do the same on the chest over top the white fur, getting an even darker gray. And to make it easier, I'm just gonna pull in more black and more white just to create a more paint and also a darker gray than what we use for the face. And I'm switching to a size eight cat's tongue brush by Arteza. Now you can use a larger round brush or even a medium flat brush. Those two brushes will work just fine. So here I go, adding in more black and white, just trying to get it a shade darker than the gray we were using before. Now, like I showed you in part one, make sure you test out this color before you mix up tons of it. I also recommend, really recommend, that you watch through to see how I paint the chest before you try it yourself. There's many different values in this chest, ranging from a dark to medium gray, all the way to a very light gray. And it can be difficult connecting those layers together, which is why I try to do some blending. But because we're working with such a large area down here and acrylics dry so fast, it can be difficult to blend when it's dried or tacky, which is why I combine the two methods together, the layering technique and the blending technique. So here you'll have to work relatively fast so that you can keep your paint wet. But then there are some areas where we practice matching colors so that we can very closely connect these values together. First, I was trying to get all the indents around the neck, but then I just decided it'd be a lot easier if we just filled in the entire center down uh, with this gray on the chest, so right below the chin, right below the collar, but keeping white on the outer left and right sides of the dog. And then we'll just go in slightly lighter on the outer edge and then right below the collar to create that dimension.
All right, so I'm just gonna pull aside some more white and a little bit of this previous gray so we can get a little bit lighter. And now I'm gonna hug the side on the right. I'm both trying to blend into some of that gray, but leaving very loose, wispy brush strokes. And I'm also trying to cover up more of that white. All right, so you notice I still have a strip of white on the far right side because I'm gonna go lighter with a different light gray there. But I'll continue blending this same color below the collar because we are getting a little highlight on the throat area. So this is gonna be blended into that gray. Now, there's times when I have to reapply the gray when I'm blending just because it becomes darker when I'm blending in it with that dark gray. So I had to do that a few times. And also, this isn't directly below the chin, it's a little to the right of it. It's important when you're applying values that you have the correct value and also the correct placement as well. All right, you can see I moved to the left shoulder and I'm both blending and filling in the rest of that white, except for the itty little bit at the very upper top left of the shoulder. That we're gonna fill in with a much lighter gray very soon. All right, so here I go, mixing up a lighter gray using the previous gray and adding more white. I'll also be switching to a size four round brush, the one that's round at the top, but also pointy. So with this gray, I'll both fill in the rest of the white on the body of spot and blend it into the previous gray layer on the far left and right sides of the body. Now there's a sharp highlight here to the left of the chin and there's also a very strong highlight on the right side, right by the collar. All right, so now I'm gonna add even more white and I'm gonna work my way down the rest of the white on the right side of Spot's back. Now I just want you to take notice to the different piles of paint that I've been mixing up for these different grays. We have a medium to dark gray, then a little bit lighter, then a little bit lighter, and then to the point where I'm almost using white now, these are the different values of gray. This is like a gray scale that I've created going from dark to medium to light. Also, to you perfectionists out there, I know how it goes because I'm definitely one of them. This is a great lesson on letting go of things being not perfect. We're going to see brush strokes here. It's going to look a bit choppy. It's what we call the ugly phase, and it's necessary before we have a finished painting. And it lasts for a very long time, and that's okay. So I'm pulling in more of this white into a medium gray that we were using before. It was like the second or third gray that we used. Now, if yours is dried up, that's fine. Just add the tiniest little pinhead size of black to the light gray that we were using before. And I'm pulling that down a little further now into the gray that we started with at the beginning for our base. Now, here is a really important artist tip that I find a lot of creatives get stuck at. They apply their dark, medium, and light values, and then they feel like it still needs something. I'm not quite sure what it is. Well, you can always revisit your dark values and make them a little darker. There's no rules that say you can't go darker than where you started. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to add in contrast to really make this look more three-dimensional. I mixed in more black into our dark base that we started with and made it darker. So that's more black and some more white. And now I'm going to really define the dark area below the throat. I'm defining that medium value highlight below the collar to the right of the chin. And I'm going to pull this dark value up all on the right side to the collar and as well bring it down along the chest. I'm actually going to have it a little to the right of the chest, not in the dead center on the bottom, but more a little to the right. Also, I want to note here, at this point, we are just layering. Everything has dried beneath this layer. Now, 
So I am going to pull a little bit more of that dark gray over to the left a little bit so it's not on the right side. Now here's another great example, an area I thought needed to be lighter. When I did test that out to make it a little bit lighter here, pulling this highlight down, I realized that it, it shouldn't be joining with that highlight on the neck. So I actually needed to make it darker. So I went back with that dark gray and pulled it up a little bit more on that left shoulder. All right, so we have some real strong choppy areas on the right shoulder of spot that I kind of want to blend a little bit and make it softer. And a trick that only works if the paint is wet is if you wash out your brush thoroughly so there's just water on it so it's damp and you literally blend the wet paint on your canvas together with that wet brush. It works only if the paint is wet. If your paint is tacky, it won't work. If your paint is dry, it won't work. I'm going to do the same thing too on the left side. All right, so I'm going to add a last layer to this body. I'm going to mix in white to a little bit of the gray we were using. You can use just a tiny little bit of black if you need to start fresh. So this is a very light gray and I'm going to pull some more down on the left and right sides. You'll notice I go all the way down the outermost part on the right side, but then I don't go all the way down on the left side. Now make sure you save that gray we were just using because we're going to use it in the next step. With my size one round brush very carefully along the left side of the smile, we have the tiniest little bit of the mouth that's showing. And so I'm just going to carefully bring that all the way down to the left side of the chin and up a little bit along the end of that smile. All right, so we're going to move back to the face. We have lots of white left on the white fur area of spot. And so that's the color we're going to mix up is going to fill up all the rest of the white on those areas. So it's just going to be a little bit lighter than the gray we started with for the dark values for the white fur on Spot's face, if you follow me. So that's a little tiny bit of black, lots of white. Remember, we didn't start with a dark gray. We actually started with more of a medium gray because this is white fur. We don't want to make it look like gray fur. And so what I'm doing here is I'm both filling in the white, but also hugging those medium gray areas. Also, I switched to my size four round brush. I know part two can feel a little bit more tricky than part one. And if you run into any problems or have any questions, just feel free to comment below with them and I'm happy to respond. I really do try to respond to every single message on my YouTube channel. All right, so coming up on this eye, I want you to pay close attention to what I do because if you notice, this light gray mixed in with that indent below the left eye, it's a bit sharp and it just needs a joiner color that's right there in between the dark gray and this light gray. So I mix in a little bit more of my gray into that and then I just make a subtle connection here between that indent and the left eye. See how nicely that just softens that area and I just blend it right when it's wet. All right, so then we go back to that gray I make sure my brush is clean, damp, and then I start working over more of that white, cutting over or hugging some of that gray. I am going to cover some of that gray on the bridge of the nose here. You'll see I'll just cover it right up. And then you'll see once I fill in the right side of the snout, I'm going to do a little bit more of that on over top the gray to the right of the left eye.
So here you'll notice I barely apply any paint over top this medium gray, but I do make sure I cover up some of it. So we have a little bit of that gray showing and it almost looks like fur. I kind of made it look a little bit more furry there and along the right side of the snout where it connects to the black area of the face. Alright guys, so next we're going to work on Spot's ears. I'm going to make a dark gray right ear and then a light gray left ear so we can add that cute little heart over top the left one. So I'm going to mix a little bit of white with lots of black for this very dark gray right ear. I'm using a size 4 round brush and if you watch me, I'm not just going to fill in the entire right ear. I will actually leave a border, a very thin white border, to the left in between that shadow underneath the right ear and the top of the right ear. And everything to the right of that white line, I'll fill in with this color. I do this very often when I'm painting things that are almost the same value or color. That way, I'm just not losing proportions and I'm going to go back in a little bit and use a lighter gray to make sure that I keep that highlight so we know, all right, what's the bottom of the ear and what's the top. Next, I'm going to mix up a medium to light gray for the left ear. So I'm going to use just a little bit of the gray that we just used for the right ear. I'm going to set aside a pile, adding more white to it, a lot more white, and then I'll start working over the entire top of the left ear, not leaving any border because this is light enough that we can distinguish that shadow from the top of the left ear. I'm going to show a little thickness on that left ear by pulling it up over top that shadow into the yellow background just a smidge. So now I'm going to mix those two colors together that we created for the right ear and the left ear and that's going to be the color we use for that highlight on the top of the right ear. So if you watch me, I'll apply this highlight over top that white border that we left as well as I'll work to the right of it on the very tippy top of this right ear and blend it down. All right, so I created a line to the far left of the top of the ear. I'm gonna leave a gap in between that and work from the top down.
I'll apply that same type highlight to the left ear, but much lighter. I'll just take some white, pull in a little bit of gray that's left on my brush, so it's not just straight white, and then I'll work top down, just blending that in so we have that nice highlight on the top of the ear. Now both my ears are still very wet, so all the colors I'm mixing over top are getting darker. If yours are dry, you might not have to do this, but I'm going to reapply another coat of white. And if you notice, I am leaving a border, that shadow above that, we created a little tiny medium gray border over top that. I'm working my highlight to the left of that so we can still see a little bit of an edge to that ear. It's time to finally fill in that black on the right of Spot's face. We're going to mix up a very dark gray, very similar to the base we applied for the right ear. So that's lots of black, a little bit of white. Still using my size for a round brush, I'm just going to very simply fill in that entire area beneath that right ear and, well, all the rest of the white we have left on our canvas. I want to note here though, for this area on Spot's face, we want to work wet into wet. So I want you to work a little bit faster here so that we can make sure we have lots of blending time. So we'll be adding a little highlights above that right eye. All right, so into this color we just applied, I'm gonna pull in some white. We don't need very much, but just a little bit for these subtle highlights above Spot's right eye. It's gonna start at the top of his head and then just come down at an angle towards that right eye. Now, because this is wet, this will get very dark so we're going to have to add more white and maybe even a third application of white. If you look closely at Spot's reference photo, it's very black to the direct left of Spot's right eye and there is an indent on to the right of his eye too, which is why I'll pick up black, nothing else, just straight black on it and blend into those areas. I'm even seeing some of this black below and to the right of the right eye. Alright, great job! We have applied almost all, not all of them, but almost all of the dark, medium, and light values to the body, the face, the eyes, nose, and mouth. So now we're about to get started with spots, spots. <laughs> we're going to add that little heart on the left ear too, and then we'll do the final phase, which is our touch-ups. I'll actually do those in between some of the spots as well. So what I'm going to do first before I apply those spots is there's just a strip, like a line of black that connects Spot's left ear to that black part of his face. So all I'm going to use is black with a size one round brush and I'm going to carefully create that line and this will cut a little bit into that yellow background. 
and I believe it's a spot on the top of his head, but it kind of cuts in a little bit, a little tiny line that cuts into that white area of Spot's face right at his forehead. And you know what? While we're here, I'm going to touch up any of the shadows beneath both ears. Now, if you notice on Spot's right ear, at the very bottom, it's real dark. There's like no light except for the little tiny edge on the left side of his ear. So I'm going to use black just to bring that shadow up a bit. Okie dokie, we're going to work on those spots. We want to work on the face first, and I'm going to mix up a medium to light gray here with black and white. So not too dark because these spots are still being exposed to that light source. So the color we mix up for the spots on the face are not going to be the same value as the ones on Spot's chest. We need to make the ones around Spot's body much darker, almost black, because they're not getting as much light as the spots on his face. This is a common mistake I see artists do. They'll just mix up one color and apply that all over the body, but everything on that animal needs to be consistent with where that light source is located. Now I'm still using my size one round brush. I'm making more oval blobby looking spots. They're going to be different sizes. They're going to be different shapes, but they're all circular. And I notice the ones on the face are smaller than the ones on the chest. I'm not making sure that I have the exact size and shape spot in the exact place that I'm seeing the reference photo. I'm just taking some cues from my reference photo and actually adding more. I love spots on dogs. I think it's so cute when they're covered in spots. So I'm going to add more than I need and then I'm just going to pull in more black for the larger spots around Spot's chest. I'm also going to keep them more central. I'm not going to add any on the areas that we've added the real light gray on the left and right of Spot's body. Now you might be noticing I'm making these spots more jagged, especially ones around his chest where they almost look like they're furry. Well, I ended up fixing that at the end. Just from my opinion, it, it looks more right to have it more of a rounded edge as opposed to a jagged one. But you know what? Find any opportunity, even in painting the spots where you can make this painting your own. I know that you're following my steps, but towards the end, I really like to remind you to try and be creative in your own way. All right, so in between our spots, I'm going to add a few more dark values because I noticed that we have a strong shadow uh, right below the nose. So I just mixed in white to the spot color we were using, and I'm applying this very carefully below the nose. Now, if you go over that indent, no worries, just use black and paint that back in. Now here's where I noticed that we can actually leave a little bit of our bottom gray layer there to create a little tiny highlight on like the end of Spot's lips. And I want to place back some of the gray that I painted over with our light gray, like right here in between the white and the black, and also at the end of the left side of Spot's smile, right above that black line. So you'll notice throughout the rest of this tutorial, I'll kind of be bouncing back and forth between medium, light, dark gray, but we just know that we want to make a dark gray for the chest, a little bit lighter gray spots. I'm talking about the spots here for the face. And so I'm going to add even more spots on both the face and the body. Now I mostly see it on the right side of Spot's snout, but there's just a little darkness there where the whiskers are. So add a little tiny bit more white to this dark gray. You can even start fresh. It's going to be a shade lighter than the spots. And I'm just going to do a few little linear dabs that create this, these like little clustered dots on the side of Spot's snout. Now, if you look closely above Spot's eyes, 
there's a dark gray line above his left eye and a light gray line that's like a highlight above his right eye. So this gray that I just created, I'm gonna use for that left eye. It's just a small little outline that cuts in towards the inside of the left eye. I'm using my size zero rigger brush. Then I'm gonna create a light gray by adding white into that quite a bit and very carefully in the opposite direction on the opposite eye doing the exact same thing. Now looking at that collar, it just looks a little funky with that light gray buckle. The metal part is too close to the value and color of spot. So I'm gonna just go on with straight black Still using my side zero rigger brush, and with black, I'm going to fill that buckle in. Next, I'm going to add some real strong plain white highlights to the white fur on spot. So this is the fur that's getting the most exposure to the light and I'm just going to use white and a size 4 round brush. I'm going to be careful not to paint over the spots or the layers that we let shine through from the bottom. My goal is just to pull out those strong highlights on the face and on spots back. Alright, so this can be tricky because we are trying to somewhat match the gray highlights that we added to the black area by Spot's right eye. We're just trying to make it a shade lighter. So what I did was created a dark to medium gray. It's going to be lighter than the base that we used, but not by much. And I recommend you test it out just so it's not too light. If it's too dark, do what I do here where I just pull in some dark gray, even can add some wet black paint to just tone it down and blend that in so that you can just make it that subtle highlight there. And we're not cutting into the black areas to the left of the right eye or to the right. We still want to keep those shadows, but I'm just pulling out those highlights right on that side, even on the right ear too. I'll do the same thing to the left ear, except I'll use just white. I'm using my size one round brush and if you notice here, I'm just kind of applying a layer of white and it's so thin that I'm just spreading it out so I, it still kind of looks like a light gray, but it's lighter, more highlighted at the very top, and then gets a little darker towards the very tip of the, the ear. I'm going to do that one more time with my white on the very top of the left ear.
Then using just black, because this is going to be mixing in with all that white we just applied to the left ear, I'm going to create this tilted heart. It's not completely straight up, it's at an angle, but honestly you can make any symbol you want right now. You can make a star, you can make a heart, you can make a rainbow, whatever you think. When I make hearts, I like to connect two pointy ovals at the bottom and then I start working on the outer border of that heart just to make it rounded on those two top ends and then pointy at the very bottom. Now here until the end of the tutorial, I am trying to lighten the chest, especially coming around both shoulders, and I'm also just trying to add more light to Spot's face. So here I created a medium gray that I'm going to pull down along the left side of his shoulder. I'll also be mixing up a light gray like a very light gray to pull more light down on the right side of the shoulder, just right down from the collar. And here I go again, adding even more white to the white fur on Spot's face. I realized I did get rid of those important medium gray highlights, or I should say low lights, that connect to the black fur, so I'm going to paint them back in. I just went over them too much with my white. So that's black with white, and I'm going to mix that perfect joining color, and it's like a medium to dark gray. I'm going to add some more white now to Spot's body on that right back and shoulder. Once again, I'll add some more white to the left shoulder. With a few dabs, I'll also expand the bridge of the nose and lighten it up as well with this white. Now there's going to be more testing of colors here because what I'm trying to do is at the very bottom of Spot's chest, I'm trying to lighten up those grays. I'm not trying to make it white but I'm because I still want to keep the shadows there, but I'm trying to mix and match colors so that it just slightly lightens them. Now there's a couple ways you can go about doing this. You can just mix up a color, test it out. If it needs to be lighter, just add more white. If it needs to be darker, just add more black. But what a, a technique that I do in the master class that I don't do here is a wash. And all I could actually have done this, it would be a lot easier, is if I added lots of water to my white and then I added this real very thin white layer over top the chest and that would do this very thing. It just add a light layer that lightens it up without me having to try and match colors like I'm doing now. You can decide which technique you want to apply, but just remember if you're applying a wash, you need to make sure that the paint you're covering is dry so that when you add that real damp watery paint over top with the white in it, it's not just smudging everything. So you want that paint layer to be dry or tacky 
and then go over it with the wash. Now I may be overdoing it with these spots, but I do another round of spots, but this time more below the nose and along the chest. Now I know these are a lot of tedious steps here. We're almost done, so don't give up now. But with black, I just thin out the very bottom edge on the left of Spot's right ear. Gosh, is that a mouthful or what? I tried to thin out that edge just with black. I noticed that the left ear looks too much like a napkin. It's just too pointy and flimsy. So I tried to somewhat round and thicken the base of Spot's left ear. For that, I mix up a light gray that's slightly dark because we want it to be darker on the bottom of that ear compared to the top. Now to pull out that beautiful, vibrant blue on Spot's nose, I grab some more cobalt blue and that's it. That's the only color and I just expand that blue on top of Spot's nose. I have it stretch a little bit further on the top on the left and right of Spot's nose. Another way to move out of that ugly phase is just by adding more layers of color to really richen up and make those colors super pigmented. So that's again what I do on Spot's collar with my permanent red. I go in and the darkest part I just add a little bit of my permanent red. Something I also like to do is expand those smiles. I like to make them a little bit wider. I mixed up a dark gray there real quick and I just am thickening up the left and right sides of the smile and pulling them up ever so slightly. Next, I see that I can add more white pulling down the shadow on the left side of the snout and pulling up the shadow on the right side of the snout. Next, with black, I touch up some of the black areas on Spot's right side of his face. I separate that highlight between the white fur and the black on his forehead. And that's when I notice if you look very closely right to the left of Spot's smile, right there at the end of it, there's just a little bit of white fur sticking out. That's when I grab my size zero rigor brush and just white and right along those wrinkles without covering them up, I just pull that white over top the yellow background. Next, with my size zero rigor brush and some white, I'm going to connect the highlight below the left eye to the bridge of the nose. If you watch me carefully, I am barely adding much white paint, just a little bit covering that area. Again, a little bit more white to that left shoulder.
I'm also going to slightly lighten up. So this might take some more matching here and testing where I'm going to mix up a light gray for the chin area. I just want to make sure it's more, it's very defined and it's not blending too much into Spot's chest. I don't want to lose that part of his mouth. Then I'll add a little bit more white to that and just outline that highlight that we left. Remember we left the base color of gray while well, I'm just going to really bring that out with my rigger brush and that light gray. I'll also use this color to bring down the, the right side of the neck and also to find that right side of the smile. It just looks a little too thick at the end. All right, creatives, we have reached the end of this tutorial. I'm gonna use my size zero round brush and black paint. And I'm very carefully in the lower left-hand corner just gonna sign my painting. I don't often do that in tutorials and I'm, I should do that more often. So just make sure you don't forget to sign your artwork. I'd love to see it if you'd like to share. I have a public YouTube community linked down below or you can just simply email it to me and I'll post it to that page or just you want to say you want to show me and I don't show anybody and that's okay too. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this and please make sure you nominate your pet or your dog, I should say, if you haven't. Have a blessed day. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.